Shrimps are pretty rich. Okay, it's time. This can't be no homegirls dropping like the Nasdaq. Is that better? Much better. Right. Hello everybody, my name is Ninja Pastry and welcome to my room. Long time no see, I am aware. I am a shit at uploading my regular schedules, whoops. But that's not the point of this video. So the point of this video is that this is a trans update and it's a pretty big one and I'm really excited about it. And the time that you are watching this video, the surgery is already done. I'm already good to go, I'm out of the hospital, I'm at home, or I'm back to working. <laughs> Broccoli. There's a lot going on. Yes. I've had, by the point that you were watching this video, I've had my first ever surgery in my entire life uh, for my transition. I'm pretty damn excited about it. So the surgery that I'm going to have is called a salpingectomy. Nice fancy word for fallopian tube removal. I have these little guys all up in my belly that uh, provide eggs from the ovaries to the uterus, which then once the uterus and the sperm from the male donor interact, they make babies and I cannot do that. I physically cannot handle that. It's also very dysphoric for me to know that I can do that and it freaks me out. And I'm a guy who likes to have sex. This surgery, would not only sterilize me, so I cannot get pregnant. Um, it will also prevent the risk of ovarian cancer, which runs in my family on my father's side. And it will also prevent the possibility of the cysts that are in my ovaries to spread through my fallopian tubes and into my uterus and the rest of my reproductive organs, such as my vagina and cervix and everything like that. So there's many reasons that I'm getting that. Uh, but this is legit my first ever surgery that I've ever had, ever. I've never gone under the knife, I've never gone under anesthetic other than local, or like, you know what I mean? Like, you get your teeth filled or you get teeth pulled, they put numbing in your face, and that's like the only thing I've ever had. We froze off a wart off my hand when I was a kid, that's about it. I've never gotten anything more than that. So I am nervous, I am anxious. I'm excited and I am so fucking happy that by the time that you were watching this video, I am less of a woman and more of a man, which is pretty, pretty cool, if I do say so myself. So I am, I'm beyond ecstatic for it. And there is a global pandemic going on, I'm aware of that. Oh, trust me, I know. I am an essential worker to two places and then a volunteer for a third and it is hellfire, and I want nothing to do with any humanity afterwards. <laughs> I don't want to see another face mask for the next 40 fucking years if that means that COVID is depleted. As long as we all stay inside and stay safe and wear our face masks and, and follow the CDC guidelines and just like, we're all hypochondriacs and we're all germaphobes for like the next year, never gone and done anything. I've never broken a bone. I've never ruptured an organ. I still have my tonsils. I still have my appendix. I still have my gallbladder. I still have the other two hearts that are in my body. I don't know where they came from. Don't ask. Stop asking questions. They're, I, like, I've never gone under the knife before. So this is really, really big for me and I'm really, really excited. I've done a lot to my body in the past almost two years now to a point where this is the next step and this is a big step. A lot of trans people that I know, be non-binary, mask or femme, or male or female, usually steer away from surgery because of how expensive it is, expensive it is, and because of where we are. There are a lot of trans people that I know, non-binary, mask femme, as well as male and female, who have had surgery, be it on either side, and that's totally cool, and that's what they want, and then on the other side they don't, and that's totally cool, and that's what they want. Like, it's, it's a huge spectrum of body like body positivity and confidence and dysmorphia and i'm the kind of person where all i want from my bottom half is for it to be non-productive not how do i phrase that non-productive meaning i don't want to be able to have children grow inside of me that's something that's always freaked me out and then when i was a teenager i grew way too fast way too quickly and it really fucked up my hips and i was basically told 
by multiple physicians, basically, that if I were to give childbirth, my pelvis would snap. And that fucking terrifies me. And that's not gonna happen because I'm not gonna get pregnant. So, not gonna happen. I am that trans male who doesn't want their breasts because I have a, rad a rather large chest and it's really, really, really in my brain. It tells me that my body isn't mine and it freaks me out and it angers me and it upsets me. And that's basically what my body does on the bottom half. I'm perfectly fine with having a USB port. <laughs> a vagina, oh my god. I do have a vag. Um, I'm perfectly content with it. I like it. It's whatever. I've had it for so many years. Like, how not to be really inappropriate on the internet. I like dick. I don't know how to phrase that otherwise. I'm perfectly content with my vagina. That's perfectly fine. It's whatever. I make it work. <laughs> it's fine. I'm it's cool. Uh, but the other part of that I'm not with. My uterus is totally fine. Hasn't bothered me. I don't care. I haven't had a period in like a year and a half. So I'm totally content with not having anything done with my uterus. My fallopian tubes, however, connect one problem to another possible problem, and that's what I want ending. So my aunt had ovarian cancer, and she had, I think, a full hysterectomy, if I remember, and that ended her chance of having children, which is very tragic and very sad, and I, uh, I have always wished the best for her, and her husband has kids, and that's awesome, and so she's lived a wonderful life, given her situation. My sister, well, both of my sisters, I do believe, have had ovarian cysts and a form of PCOS, I think one of them has. And one of them's pregnant, and she's having a baby girl, and we're very, very excited. She's due in August. Her name's Jamie, and I am so excited to be an uncle. Holy shit. But that's awesome. And so there's ways of life in my life that have had these issues of I can't have kids and I can have kids. Jessica has had her own problems, my mom had problems, my aunt had problems. I mean, I was a problem kid when it came to my birth, and my youngest sister was a problem when it came to her birth. So like, there's a lot of factors that go in for me to be able to have kids, and seeing everyone struggling with birth in my family, both maternal and paternal, it freaks me out and I just can't do it. So, I mean, there are transgender men, non-binary and trans mask who are perfectly fine with having kids and that's fantastic and I root you on and I'm so proud of you. There are those who want kids but can't, who can't have kids, who can't uh, grow children, which is, I, I, my heart goes out to you and I, I do apologize and I really hope that your life, you can find contentment in doing so, either adopting or surrogacy, surrogacy and such as that. And my heart goes out to you and I really hope the best for you. And that's where I stand. I'm the person who I don't want to have children by birth. I want to have surrogates or adopt. And like, I'm 21, I just turned 21. So like, I'm not in the correct brainwave to be able to think about actually fathering children at this moment, which is strange because some of my friends are kid, are parents at like 18 to 19, but I just, I just can't do it. Like, it's not, it's not that I'm not mature enough because I'm very mature. It's just, I don't have the life set up for being a father at the moment, or a mother, or a child bearer. So this would bring a lot of stress levels down for me to have this done. So yeah, this whole video escapade is going to be about the surgery and what it's going to do and what's going to happen and how my feelings and like the whole, whole thing about it, this is what this video is. So I am very excited. I'm very excited to feel more man than I am woman, and not having, uh, not having that doesn't bother me, because biologically, the female clitoris is tech- I have a hiccup- is technically an inverted male penis, so I technically still have a penis even though I have a vagina, so I'm not mad about it, so <laughs> it's just the balls that I want to get- I'm basically getting a vasectomy, there we go. Done. Oh, great. Except there's no balls there. The balls are inside and the tube is on the inside, so they have to go. Yeah, you get the point, alright? I get it. You get it? Cool. 
All right. <laughs> Anyways, so join me on my journey, and I will see you on the other side. Well, that fucking sucked. So, in lieu of getting surgery with the pandemic that is going on right now, uh, that hurts so bad. I have to get tested for COVID-19. Um, I'm, I don't have symptoms. I have not been in contact with anyone who has had COVID, but because of the risk and because I'm going to be in a hospital situation for some time and such as that, um, I have to get tested. It's part of the process. So I just got tested and ow, owie, owie, zowie, that fucking hurt. She took this like super oh, geese ducklings oh, geeselings uh, super super thin uh, q-tip and just put it up there like all the way up my sinuses so I tilted my head all the way back and she just stuck this q-tip as far back as it could and then she twirled it for a second and then she left it there for like 15 seconds, which I think the leaving it there hurt the most. Twisting it wasn't that bad, but the fact that she left it there was the most painful part. Ugh. <laughs> that fucking hurt. Uh. I'm, <laughs> I'm no stranger to getting things shoved up my nose. I have had tonsillitis, strep throat, and bronchitis enough times to know what that feels like. I've had things shoved down my throat, up my throat, back behind my nose, everything. So like, it's not that I'm not used to how this feels. It just fucking hurt, dude. I was not ready for that. On my way home now, from the hospital. Oh. Uh, today is Tuesday. We jump lighting. Um, my surgery is on Thursday. And I'm so fucking excited. I get to say this is actually, the, the actually happening. I've organized some more of my room, which is pretty great. I got my whole computer station set up, as you saw. I got my little fairy lights put up and everything. And then I have all my clothes organized. This guy is eating my car's asshole right now. Like, my muffler doesn't taste that good, buddy. I don't know why you're sitting there. Um, yeah, everything's set up and ready to go, and I'm ready for quarantine, so good thing I'm heading home to do that right now. Not excited that I have the quarantine, but I'm excited that everything is set up in order to quarantine. God, this dude really loves the taste of my muffler. Jeez. I have the worst road rage, because it's not like angry road rage, but it's enough to be like, you okay there, bud? Oh, there's the bloody nose taste. Wow, you are going. Fuck. Anyway, I'll see you later. Alright, so excuse the shitty lighting and the shitty audio, but we in here, boys. I am capped and gowned and socked and the whole kit and caboodle. And it's just crazy that it's finally, finally happening. Can't see my smile, but there is definitely a smile going on. And then, um, I got like no sleep. I went to bed around 10 last night, and then, well, I didn't go to sleep until like midnight, 40, 1 a.m. ish. And I woke up at 3.45 this morning and showered, so I'm a sleepy boy, but I'm gonna be asleep anyway, so it's not too bad. But my best friend drove me, she's chilling out in the parking lot, playing Switch, watching videos, whatever. I'm sitting in a hospital. It's crazy that I'm finally here because I never really thought that I could get to this point, if that makes sense. I never really knew what my life would be like when I was younger, and t 
to know that I'm finally able to set up myself for the best life possible now it's kind of crazy I don't know if I make sense right now I'm very tired I'm very excited it's weird and I'm not gonna regret it and I'm not ever going to regret this it's just crazy that it's finally happening when I get my top surgery done now that's gonna be insane but right now it's just kind of like this is cool <laughs> I've never done this I've never had a surgery before I've never been in this situation both of my older sisters have had surgery. My younger brother has had surgery. Uh, but I'm scot-free. And here's my surgery V card, <laughs> one would say. I would say. So I'm, I'm excited. So see you on the other side. Hello. I am in a lot of pain. It is Friday. It is 3.45 in the afternoon. And right now I'm feeling pretty bad. But I'm doing okay. I just had dinner. I basically just had my one meal for the day. Ooh, that hurt. Today I'm in. Oh, I'm in a lot more pain than I was yesterday. But that's what the nurse told me to expect. Mm. I'll film what all happened and like how everything went tomorrow because I'm in a lot of pain right now and I'm gonna go to bed take an uh, take a nap I did take a shower today and I feel pretty damn great about that but I'm still in a lot of pain my back hurts really bad so I'm gonna go to sleep I'll update you more tomorrow it is Sunday, I think. I don't know what day it is. I never know what day it is. What day is it? It is Monday. It is Memorial Day. And it is a good day today. Um, excuse me. Oh, that hurt. <clears throat> excuse me. Um, being hooked up to the EKG machine was kind of interesting. I am known to have notoriously low blood pressure, like on the cusp of dangerous. Um, not because I have like blood pressure issues where like my body just doesn't pump blood. I have a very rare form of Raynaud's disease, which prevents blood from going places that it needs to. So like my hands and feet will get really cold and I'll overheat because my chest is really hot because my blood just doesn't pump. I'm a very active person when I'm at work and when I'm working out and such as that. Like just now, for right now at least, I'm very low brow, sitting playing Minecraft, sleeping all day. Like very low caliber blood, re blood necessity sort of situation going on. So my blood pressure is always really, really low. So when I was hooked up to the EKG and they had the heart monitor on me, it kept dipping below like a safe level and it kept setting off the code. And so <laughs> they had to come in and turn my blood pressure monitor, like my blood monitor down to child because it kept dipping below four, uh, 50 and 40. So that was interesting. She thought it was funny because she was like, you're, in a, you're a full grown adult and yet you're on the child monitor right now. And I, go, I, I, I don't know how to, <laughs> I don't know what to do about this either. This is just my life. Doctors are confused by even looking at my medical history, let alone being in a room with me. So 
you're one up above here, so cheers to you. But they were very, 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 very nice. They had to shave my stomach, rip from my stomach hair, but it'll grow back. Um, and then I, <clears throat> they wheeled me to the operating room. And I remember the pain of them putting the anesthetic in the IV because for some reason that hurt really bad. And then them putting the mask on, but I don't remember anything else. Like I remember just like that and then I'm done. So they didn't count down from 10. They didn't do the whole, say your alphabet. Like they didn't do that whole thing at all. It was just, here's the anesthetic, here we go. And I was like, okay, I don't really, I can't really contest this. I remember being put onto the bed, but by that point, the Vicodin had kicked in and I wasn't like 100% there, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, I woke up and I had my little pillow. It says, we care, MOBAP auxiliary and volunteers. So thank you, MOBAP. I really, really like this pillow. It's very comfy. It's nice to put on my stomach when I'm sitting on the couch and digesting food because digesting food really fucking hurts right now <sighs> uh, i just woke up and i just ate so like everything is like hey, babe, babe. um but that day i woke up and the first thing i asked was what time is it did i do okay because even when i'm fucking not alive at that moment i have to be doing something <laughs> something well enough to get a good grade. I wonder if I'm brainwashed or something, but uh, I wonder if I'm a perfectionist or something, but uh, but I woke up and I apparently was moaning a lot because I was trying to talk, but I, could, I didn't want to talk or something like that. She was like, you kept moaning, but I assumed it was the pain, which it probably was because no pleasure is worth that amount of money, let's just say that. My best friend picked me up and we went and I had some Taco Bell for my first meal. I had a soft taco and a Doritos and it was soggy and it was so good. Um, sitting up straight is a lot of energy. Um, but I went home that day and my dad was home and he took good care of me and he made me pasta for dinner. Oh, it was so good macaroni and french fries oh so good but uh took took it very 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 slow that first day here's some pictures of the scars and the <clears throat> incisions on the first day it's not graphic at all it's very small like very minimal because it was a laparoscopic which is the uh little arms that they put in you and then they do everything like that um I have one little scratch on my belt line, and then I have two right where my ovaries are, and then one in my belly button. And the belly button one probably hurts the most. And the way that I've described the pain when it comes to like eating and sitting down and like stuff like that, is you know how when you get like a new pair of socks or like a pack of something, like a pack of socks, I guess, and it's like plastic zip tied, Excuse me, is it tied together? Excuse me, so you can't like... Hold on. Well, like... <clears throat> you get a pair of socks and they've got like that plastic thing in, like, in them to keep them all together. That's what my organs feel like right now. Like the one end of the tie is like inside and then the other one is on my stomach. So like every time I move or stretch or eat, it like pulls on that plastic really really fucking hurts it's okay today like today's probably the least amount of pain that i've been in but friday sucked friday sucked so much friday sucked friday was the worst amount of pain i had been in i couldn't turn over i couldn't like sit up oh my god it sucked so bad but my healing has been super super quick and i'm super super thankful for it I took a nice, nice hot shower on Friday, and then I took one yesterday, and ooh, felt so good. I get up around like 10 a.m., 11, depending, and then I'll eat something. I'll do whatever I need to do for a couple hours, and I usually 
take a nap from like 3.30 until like 5.30. I'll get up, I'll eat something small. I usually sit out in the living room with dad and like watch whatever we want to watch. And then uh, I'll stay up until like nine and then I'll go back to bed. And it's been far easier recently to go to sleep. I actually slept on my side for the first time last night. Bonus points, or I took a full nap yesterday on my side, which really hurt, but like I woke up and I was like, oh, that was a good nap. Because <laughs> I do not sleep on my back at all. I'm not a back sleeper, I'm a stomach sleeper. I sleep on my chest with Kurt, my sock monkey, and I sleep like this my head on my pillow like that and I just sleep like that and I'll move however I need to throughout the night because I don't have the ability to like move in my sleep or like turn in my sleep that well I'm not getting that good of sleep I'm just like resting and healing which I guess is what I need more than like genuine sleep when it comes to the female part of it. This part might get a little bit graphic, so if you want to skip ahead, here's a timestamp to skip to. When it comes to the female stuff, I have been discharging, like, bleeding, and this is, like, my last official period of ever having. Because um, when I started hormones, I didn't have a period after three months. So I've been almost two years on hormones without a period, so this is my like official last forever, never gonna have a period ever again sort of thing, which is pretty nice. Um, but I have been discharging, and it's been like brownish red, like an injury almost, and coming out, it has smelled so bad, so bad. But it hasn't been too terrible, it's been like a period, like... It's blood, you just wipe it off and you go about your day. And I'm not going to put a tampon up there because I don't use tampons. Having a vagina, I discharge a lot. Like, I always have, I always will. So, I always wear a pad because if I discharge too much, it's going to eat my underwear away because it's acidic. And I've tried everything to do about that and it, I just have acidic discharge, it's whatever. So, I made sure that I always have a pad on and so it just gets on the pad and I change my pad out but it's oh my god it smells so gross it's so gross I hate it it's, it's probably the worst about all of it all right gross stuff over some of the weird side effects of going into having surgery is pain that I didn't know that I would have pain that I didn't think that I would have so I had my IV, you can see a little hole in my hand right there and right there. Um, I had my IV in my hand. This is where it went into my vein. Obviously you can see my veins. So it's very easy for doctors to just be like, blood, oh. And then this, uh, it's just a blister from the uh, bandage that they put on my hand. It just rubbed off the wrong way. I don't know, it's really weird, but uh, this hurt for a couple days. I had the thing around my hand, like, uh, it's called buddy bandage. This is buddy bandage where it's just like a tape, but it sticks to itself. This stuff is great, by the way. I love buddy bandage. It's so nice. Um, so I had that on my hand for a couple days and I couldn't, like, move my wrist because that really, really hurt to move it. Um, Again, my belly button hurts really, really bad. And then my mouth hurts, and it still hurts. It's Monday. It's been four days, and it still, like, hurts. So, I've had anything and everything lung and chest infection related. I've had tonsillitis four times, strep throat ten, bronchitis twice, and pneumonia once. So I'm used to getting things, like, poked down my throat and around my tonsils and, like, up my throat and blah, blah, blah. So I'm used to stuff doing that. I've never had a breathing tube put down my throat before that I know of, that I remember at least. So that sucked. 
Like my whole esophagus still hurts. And I've been drinking plenty of water, I've been resting my throat, I've been just resting and sleeping and everything like that. Like my right tonsil, like yes, I still have my tonsils. My right tonsil hurts still pretty bad. And then I have blisters all up in my mouth, like everywhere. So like, right, you can't really see it, so I'm not really gonna show you. But it feels like, it feels like, you know when you like get glue on your hands and you let it dry and you forget that it's there and you like move your hand and you're like, oh, I have glue on my hands. That's what it feels like, but it's all on the upper side of my upper lip and then all right here on my mouth and then all right here in my mouth. And it's, I don't know what they did or like what they put in my mouth, like other than the mouthpiece itself, but like this right here especially hurts so bad. So like talking and then it rubbing up against my teeth and then uh, it's the worst brushing my teeth really fucking hurt the first couple days holy shit uh that sucked brushing my teeth sucked but yeah it's been every day has been better and better except thursday was fine and then friday sucked but today i made some progress or yesterday i made some progress i what day is it monday saturday actually i put on a real people shirt put on a shirt instead of my bed shirt because I was just wearing my bed shirt and a bra and like shorts and that was it but I actually put on a real shirt on Saturday which was pretty nice and then yesterday I put on another different shirt so today I have on another different shirt and I'm pretty proud of myself <laughs> um little victories like washing my face and brushing my teeth and taking a shower is pretty great uh, walking has been very difficult. I have not done the stairs. I'm a little scared to do the stairs, but I have been walking out to the mailbox every day. So I know it's Memorial Day weekend, so I know that the mail truck isn't gonna come this weekend, which is totally fine. But I'm still walking out there to like check the mailbox to give myself something to walk for. Walking around the house, it's the house, it's whatever. Walking to the mailbox, that's an extra step. That's, that's a lot of extra steps. That's like a whole mailbox worth. That's a whole driveway worth of steps. So walking to the mailbox and back has been pretty painful. But today, where I live, I live on like a hill. And then there's the house at the top of the hill. And then it's mine. And then there's two other houses. So I walked from my house to the top of the hill and back. So it wasn't too far, but it was still an incline. <laughs> That hurt really bad, but I walked it, so I'm pretty proud of myself. I walked a, a further distance than what I usually do. I usually just walk to the mailbox and back and hope for the best, but I was pretty proud of myself. So yeah, I just ate. My stomach hurts really bad. Digesting food hurts so much, so much, oh my god. So I'm gonna lay down for a little bit and or sit and rest for a little bit and let this do what it needs to do and then I'm gonna take a nap. So this is my update for the day. Glad I could get it out. I'm very tired now. I'll see you later. So I don't feel like putting up my tripod and everything. I am fully healed. But yes, I'm completely healed. It is June 18th. Um, and I am 100% ready to go, baby. I was, so, I don't know, so, some of this is gonna be pretty gross. You've made it this far. <laughs> so I am very, very happy with how everything turned out. I went for my two week post-op, a week late, whoops, and I've been medically cleared for Christ. I've been medically cleared for having sex, for going and exercising. I've just been given the okay to resume normal life activities, which I haven't had any sex since like December rib, but I have had pretty much gone back to my normal everyday life routine about a week ago anyway, just without some of the lifting and some of the like bending over and stuff, cause that still hurt a little bit. But now I've been having my me time, I've been doing what I wanted to do, 
I have yet to go back to the gym because it's still not really that safe to go back yet, but once the gym is open and like it's starting to be safe and I feel comfortable going back, I will be going back. Um, but let me show you my scars. These were the two incision marks, and you can see that this one's pretty much gone. It's very, very light. This one was the one that had a bit of an issue with the, um, with the glue, so it's a little darker. And then there's that little... <laughs> Then there's this little bit on my hip line that that was just like a needle or whatever. And my belly button, like, it looks completely fine. Like nothing, nothing different about that. It's just a belly button. My dad had stomach surgery when I was little and they, so he has diverticulosis and they took out some of his small intestine and they went in through his belly button for part of his procedure. And he said that his belly button would forever feel different. Well, I never really like paid attention to how my belly button felt, so it doesn't really bother me, so I don't know where he got that whole, like, your belly button's gonna feel different for the rest of your life. A isn't how he sounds, and B doesn't really apply to me. So, I'm perfectly fine. I'm all good to go. I'm feeling very, very content and happy with how I am now. Um, it feels great that I can better explore myself and others in this new part of my life. Hi mom, I talk about sex on the internet. <laughs> is this what my life is now? The next step is top surgery, of course, which will be something special and something different. I'm happy, I'm content, I'm good with my body, and I feel, I feel a lot more like how I should feel, which still a bit of a strange concept to me because I feel like I should feel masculine, different. I'm content with a vagina. Cool with that. I'm growing my own dick. It's like an inch. Impressive, I know. So like I'm content with what I have because that is what I enjoy. So I'm not going to get a phalloplasty and I don't have any skin to donate to do that because I have tattoos. But I am content with having a little bit less of myself. Now, having the ovaries still in me, um, they're just there. It's like an appendix. It's an organ that I have, that I have no need for, but it is there. If it becomes a problem, then it can be removed. Like people who have appendicitis, they get their appendix removed. If I end up having problems with my ovaries or my uterus come down the line in the future, then I'll get them removed. Like it's, it's just, just an organ. Those can be removed. <laughs> Now that I think about that, that's a little weird to say, but you understand what I mean. I finally feel pretty good, which is pretty good. I'm very thankful for everyone who has pushed me along and helped me out with this because I never really thought that I, w I would end up here. Top surgery is gonna be a whole nother feeling, but for something this minor, it was pretty cool to see the outpour of love and appreciation from my friends and family so to those of you who supported me through this thank you very very much you will be thanked dearly in my thoughts and my dreams and we are planning some big things for my top surgery once that comes down the line so definitely stay tuned for that um yeah i that is my three-week post-op update and i am very happy and very thankful for all of this so thank you very much thank you everybody so much for watching what i would like for you to do is to ice the like button and bake the subscribe to a perfect golden brown at 450 degrees if you like this video please share it go ahead in the comment section down below let me know what you would like to see me from see from me in the future um my toaster fight and productions is working on some big things as well given the situation we can't really do much but we're still working on some pretty big things i've got some things in the future planned as well so we are hard at work while everyone else is hardly working so <laughs> yikes i appreciate you i love you all very very much happy pride month happy juneteenth because fuck america black lives matter i'm screaming what the fuck is up like i ain't see the sky the shit i'm doing this year Insanity, ain't the beat that murdered it, Casey Anthony.